When examining the pantheon of legendary dive watches, one can consider a lot of different brands. They have Rolex, you have Omega, you have Seiko, uh, Doxa, and even Zodiac. But another brand that of course needs to be mentioned is Blancpain. And looking at the 50 Fathoms, it's one of the, I'd say, almost underappreciated watches ever created for what it was able to do in paving the way for other dive watches that followed. So today I wanna to look a little bit closer at the 50 Fathoms, looking at a contemporary model, as well as the backstory and why this watch is so legendary. Now, before we jump into highlighting this particular model that we have here today, I wanted to look at a little of the construction and backstory of the 50 Fathoms, as it will help with giving full appreciation as well as kind of a view into why it really is what it is in terms of a design point of view. To begin, we have to head back to the early 1950s. At this time, Blancpain was under operation of the Fichter family, of Betty Fichter and her nephew, Jean-Jacques Fichter. Jean-Jacques, who was the managing director of Blancpain at this time, was an avid diver during this period as well, and through experience uncovered the dire need for divers to have reliable ways to track time when under the water surface, following a personal dive of his where he came dangerously close to running out of oxygen. So Jean-Jacques set out to develop a dive watch. And at this time, there really was no preconceived idea about what a dive watch should look like or what it really should be. So he just set out with trying to, to determine and develop a watch that could meet specific criteria. It needed to have great legibility underwater. It needed to be able to track time of dives as well as have, of course, great water resistance. The quest for these features led to the creation of the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, which made its way to market in the year 1953, becoming the first commercially available modern dive watch. That said, during this period, there was also a tie-in with the French naval forces that were looking for a new dive watch as well. So there's a bit of mixed history on whether the development of the 50 Fathoms was developed as a result of a request from the French Navy, or was it well on its way prior? Yet this aside, the 50 Fathoms became a fixture in the world of diving upon its release and was also issued as part of the kit of several countries, navies, including the French, Spanish, Israeli, German, and United States. In recent times, though, the 50 Fathoms has gone up market in comparison to that of the Submariner, for example, but has sustained the same aspect of its original design principles that allowed it to pave the way for dive watches in the modern world of horology. Which brings us to a more contemporary blend of the original design with the reference we're going to be showcasing today, the 5015 12B30 NABA. This watch comes in with a case size of 45 millimeters, thickness of 15.4 millimeters, lug width of 23 millimeters, lug to lug of 50 millimeters, movement is an automatic 1315, has a sapphire crystal on both the front and the back, water resistance of 300 meters, and this one features a titanium case. So when examining how this watch wears on the wrist in terms of its design, I think it's important to keep in mind the original just thought process around developing the watch itself. It was a tool and it was developed in a way with both sizing and style in mind to represent what was needed for underwater environments. First, starting with this reference, we have a 45 millimeter titanium case that when saying out loud, you might think, wow, that is big. And yes, that case size is large. Yet here with this Blancpain case, when combined with the fact that it's titanium, we actually have a very wearable watch here, all things considered. As I went into this review, I had yet to have the opportunity to spend an extended period of time wearing a 50 Fathom. So I had my doubts on how wearable the piece could be on, in just day-to-day -day wear. But surprisingly in wearing this watch over the past couple of weeks, I think the watch actually works for my six and a quarter inch wrist or 15.9 centimeters. With this in mind, it certainly qualifies this reference as a watch that needs to be experienced in trying on before casting judgment completely on whether it will work for your wrist size. The piece on the wrist, no question, demands a bit of attention and is rather thick, but much of its dimensions are not actualized in its wear. This is also contributed by the positioning of the lugs in respect to the case. Despite the lugs not being compact at 23 millimeters apart, their position being fixed farther out than normal on the side of the case leads to a much more restrained lug to lug. Between the lugs on this watch comes a comfortable NATO strap that lays flat on the wrist, held in place with added security with the help of screwed in holes in the lugs rather than traditional spring bars. 
And I try not to sound like a broken record on the channel with my, what seems to be constant requests of smaller case sizes. And 45 millimeters here, it's not small. 15 millimeters in thickness, not small either. But the wearing experience of this watch is actually quite good uh, for this size, especially with the titanium case, pretty, I mean, relatively compact lug to lug for this case size and diameter you're getting a pretty solid wearing experience, even on a smaller wrist. So I, I was very pleasantly surprised. And I think, again, you just have to understand what this watch was made to do and made to be. But examining this case a little bit closer, it's executed in a satin brush finish and has a gray matte tone that plays with the darker undertones with the bezel and dial. Along the non-crown side of the case, there's an engraved signing of Blancpain. And on the opposite side of the case, we have a signed screw down crown with notable grooves for easy engagement that matches that of the bezel with its prevalent notches helping the user engage the 120 click action. The bezel is secure and satisfying in its unidirectional motion and is very audible when rotating. The bezel features bold markers that assist in its legibility being seen easily underneath the sapphire cap. But the bezel also has a nice trick up its sleeve when it is in the dark, as it begins to show its fully luminescent markers matching with the striking elements of the dial. Now, as previously mentioned, this particular model that we have here today is going to follow a lot of the same original design elements, but got a little bit of a refresh in 2007. So it's gonna follow that kind of refresh in terms of its design with a few subtleties in the dial. The black dial features a raised central point that creates a level of depth on the surface, being executed in a strong black with subtle glossiness that plays with the light. Along the outside nestled, Underneath the minute track, the watch features elevated white gold applied markers and quarter numerals containing superluminova to match the bezel, which when in the dark is nothing short of extraordinary in its ability to shine brightly, a feature that you might expect from a model with this amount of diving pedigree. However, the new inclusion prevalent here that was introduced in this design style in 2007 is the inclusion of the subtle addition of the date window nestled between the four and five o'clock with a matching date disc offering a more under the radar inclusion. Flipping over this 50 fathoms, we have view through a sapphire crystal of the automatic caliber 1315. First, starting with the decoration, the movement features an 18 karat gold rotor that has matching satin finish along the outside with a blasted center matching the color of the rest of the case and features a Blancpain 50 fathoms logo contained within. The bridges feature high polished anglage edges and a thinly lined finish on the upper surface that is practically unseen to the naked eye, but begins to make itself known with closer examination. In addition, the movement also executes a tasteful array of displayed jewels and features a free sprung balance. The movement operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz, contains 36 jewels, has hacking capabilities so you can stop the second when pulling the crown out to the farthest position and can also be hand wound. The balance is free sprung, assisting in its resistance to shock. The movement also has three main spring barrels, which assist in achieving the 120 hour power reserve, five day power reserve. So this one's gonna last quite a bit of time. And you're also getting a silicon hairspring as well to help against magnetism. And the movement itself is going to outperform certified chronometers as the movement has internal spec to match the roots of the piece and walks that fine line of decorated without forgetting that this is a true sports watch and a tool watch after all. When looking at modern collecting circles, it's hard to even consider that less than three quarters of a century ago, the world of dive watches was really just unexplored and yet to be defined. Yet at the forefront of discovery and innovation for dive watches, where there was no precedent yet created and technology was limited to really be able to support the tax and conditions of adventurous depths, the 50 Fathoms was there to pave the way. And despite whether the watch is priced out of your budget range or is just simply not your style, as an enthusiast and maybe even a lover of dive watches, the watch deserves a tip of the cap for what it was able to accomplish. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That's all a huge help for the channel. So I would appreciate that. And also I wanna hear what your thoughts are on the 50 Fathoms. I think it resides in an interesting price tier that it makes it a little bit more difficult to maybe consider. Uh, but for those that are interested in dive watches, I, I think the ethos of what the 50 Fathoms is and was has been maybe sustained a little bit better than a lot of other luxury dive watches. 
uh, over the years. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. What are your opinions of uh, Blancpain as well as uh, the watch in general? I'd love to see comments down below. Also guys, if you wanna stay up to date with what's coming out, what's going on with me, as well as seeing some awesome photos of watches, be sure to follow me on Instagram as well. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.